Welcome back to Capital Report, a spirit discussion here along the table. As always, you know, the, the, the labor organization, the AFL-CIO, largest organization in the state, had their convention this week, the annual cattle call. Everyone came and basically made their pitch. A real surprise, they nominated uh, Donovan and Chris Murphy. Marty, talk, talk about labor. Labor still meaningful in the state of Connecticut? Well, the fact that the Republican candidates came to the convention indicates that there is some sway that labor has amongst the electorate and amongst the political class. On top of that, um, if labor wasn't relevant, why would you have me on your show, Tom? You know, I, you know I'm, I'm an Irish labor goon, so obviously um, labor's relevant. The other thing is to combat the tremendous amount of money that's being pumped in by the one percent you need foot soldiers and labor is the biggest source of foot soldiers um, in the country in the, in the democratic party i think it's a negative stereotype i think in two thousand and nine to two thousand and twelve is a very different kind of atmosphere i think that the people of connecticut are really tired of having to pay for pensions and benefits for public sector unions and i think that that's going to come full circle now as a candidate you go talk to a wide audience of people because i'll tell you what the labor leaders do not speak for all members and members go into the booth alone and they will vote their conscience and seventy percent of members vote the way the endorsements come out so you're absolutely right not all members vote the endorsed slate but it's a democratic process those delegates are elected at the grassroots level to go to those conventions and 70 percent of the membership vote with their leadership so it is very important to understand we are not saying that we are a monolithic block we're not like the tea party we don't all wave our little snaky flag but where you're, okay. where you're allowed to. Snakey flag. Well, well, here's we, what, come here's on what, now. Chris Murphy uh, gave a red meat speech to the convention, as you would imagine. Here's what he had to say. So here's what I want to say to you today. But here's really what I want to say to them. To Carl Rove and to Grover Norquist and to the Koch brothers and to Lyndon McMahon and to any other super PAC or any other billionaire who thinks that they can buy this election out from under us. Hell no. Marty, red meat for the labor, huh? Look at that. Hell no. Listen, <laughs> Murph has been with us forever. Uh, he got elected as a long shot candidate for the legislature with labor support. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a red meat speech. I think it's the truth. Well, Hell no. And, and, and his point is, is money a, a factor in these elections? Absolutely. But if there's one thing we learned in Connecticut, Senator Blumenthal would be the first to tell you, yeah, money matters. But when you get your message out to the voters, look, look at what ended up. Linda McMahon put $50 million of her own money in. We're seeing super PACs come in at the end of the day. If you have enough money to compete and get your message out basically on television, we've got an election. Right, the super PACs are definitely coming in. There's no question about it. Labor is the biggest super PAC out there. Absolutely. And I'm Sure, if Ned Lamont wanted to start a super line. PAC, Chris Murphy would be kissing his butt. Hey, that's true. That's true. So let's call it what it is. No, no, let, but that's, let's start by saying labor is the biggest super PAC out there. Absolute lie. No, labor's, it's not. Con labor's contribution in politics nationwide you know in Oregon you know is what? in aggregate folks is who much are within smaller. The labor's, yeah. Folks who are within unions have an opportunity to check off a box that says, I don't want my dues to go toward and, funding that and what, particular and candidate. What percentage, and they should check their box. And what percentage of, of people check that box off? Do you know? More this year than ever before. Let Less me tell you. Less than two percent nationwide. Wide. Well, I'm, I'm sure that will change. Mm -hmm. I'm sure oh, it there's will my change. Democrats. You want to put, get the Democratic <laughs> bobbleheads in, in, in front of you. Put those things down. <laughs> Hey, let's let's talk about the, the McMahon campaign briefly. She's in a <laughs> again, again. Do we have let's enough talk money? Them again. No, she's in a vicious war with the Norwich Bulletin and and the media in general. So so the McMahon campaign is on the attack. They wrote a letter. Look at this. They said, I expect outrageous attacks from Linda's opponents, but not from the Norwich Bulletin. Ray Hackett's editorial is nothing more than recycled personal insults. We all know that media bias exists, and that's okay. But what's not okay is when bias dissolves into temper tantrums, threats, and blackmail. Jody, what do you think about that? What's the McMahon campaign messaging? Is this a war on the media? I think that that particular editorial was 
slanted toward what Ray Hackett wanted to say, and that's fine, that's his prerogative, but I can tell you for a fact that I sat in on dozens of editorial board meetings with Linda. She does not hide from them. Wait, she has sat down with them. Two years ago, not this time. She did some prior to this particular column. And now she's saying she's not going to do say, any. Well, let the, me just say the, to you, after the, it is a candidate's prerogative whether they want to sit down with an editorial board. No, no it's a candidate's quite responsibility. Frank, no, because quite frankly, they can go out on the walking tours and approach her whenever they want to on a Main Street and ask uh, a question. No. If you want to ask her something, she will be more than glad it to answer. It is a candidate's prerogative. They can go in. They don't have to talk to them. Totally up to the candidate. This is a tactic that you see when you are hiding your your candidate when That's you can't exactly right. well, Sarah Palin making contradictory hey, statements. She lost her arm there. Jody, Vinny, is, 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 is this a blame to be uh, this, uh, this happened before in presidential politics. Watch, watch this. I think the destructive, vicious, negative nature of much of the news media makes it harder to govern this country, harder to attract decent people to run for public office, and I am appalled that you would begin a presidential debate on a topic like that. Blame the media, blame the media, blame the media, Vinny. Well, uh, to, to go back for a moment, I, you know, I think when it comes to McMahon, she's a shrewd businesswoman. And she, uh, there's no hiding going on here. I think she's completely calculating. And we'll, we'll, this is a woman who's climbed into rings with enormous, monstrous men. And a uh, she is fearless. Line, a scripted storyline. She is trying to replicate the when WWE's Kepler, the scripted storyline. It's real. When it is real. When <laughs> returns, we know who the true most interesting man in the world is. He would be Governor Dan Malloy. Watch him break a ribbon, maybe? when Cap Report returns.